Welcome to the Michael Hudson Report on the Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Perez coming to you from Baltimore. A ceasefire in eastern Ukraine has been agreed to following a marathon all-night 17-hour negotiation between Russian President Vladimir Putin and Ukraine President Petro Poroshenko. They were flanked by other European leaders keeping vigil. Russia and Ukraine may have many differences, but what they have in common is a looming economic crisis, with oil prices taking a dive on the Russian side and a very expensive war they were not counting on on the Ukrainian side. Joining us now to talk about all of this is Michael Hudson. He is a distinguished research professor of economics at the University of Missouri, Kansas City. His upcoming book is titled Killing the Host, How Financial Parasites and Debt Bondage Destroyed the Global Economy. Michael, thank you, as always, for joining us. Good to be here. So, Michael, in a recent interview published in the National Interest magazine, you said that most media covers the Russia as if it is the greatest threat to Ukraine. History suggests that IMF may be far more dangerous. What did you mean by that? Well, the terms on which the IMF make loans, uh, first of all, are based on austerity. The terms require more austerity and a withdrawal of all the public subsidies. Now, you have the Ukrainian population absolutely devastated. Uh, the only result of the IMF's austerity uh, program, that uh, the conditions that it's laying down for making loans to Ukraine, is you, you have to uh, repay the debts, but you don't have the ability to repay their debts. So there's only one thing way to do it, and that's the way that we've told uh, Greece and other countries to do. You have to begin selling off uh, whatever you have left of your public domain, uh, or you have to have your leading oligarchs uh, take on partnerships uh, with American or European uh, investors so that they can buy out into the monopolies uh, in the Ukraine. So essentially, uh, the IMF is, has a two-stage uh, one two punch. The one, the punch number one is here's the money. Now you have to repay us uh, after cutting back public spending and causing a depression. The two punches. Oh, you can't pay us. I'm sorry that all of our projections are wrong. And the IMF has been wrong on Ukraine year after year, almost as much as it's been wrong on Ireland and uh, on Greece. So uh, now the real problem is what is Ukraine going to have to sell off to? Uh, pay the foreign debts that it gets for having uh, waged the war that's devastated the economy. Well, the main things that the foreign investors want are Ukrainian farmland. Uh, Monsanto has been buying into Ukraine. But Ukraine has a law against alienating its uh, farmland and agricultural land to foreigners. Uh, and a matter of fact, its law is very much the same as what uh, the Financial Times reports that Australia is wanting to do today to uh, block uh, Chinese and American purchase of far farmlands. Uh, the IMF's position is you have to dismantle public regulations against uh, against uh, foreign investment, uh, and you have to dismantle consumer production uh, and environmental protection uh, regulations. So, uh, the, in other words, what is in store for Ukraine is the, a neoliberal policy that's guaranteed to actually uh, make it even worse. And in that sense, finance is war. Finance is the new kind of warfare uh, using uh, finance and uh, forced sell-offs in the IMF uh, is a new kind of battlefield. So it's, uh, I'm not sure how all of this is going to uh, uh, really help Ukraine, and it, it promises to lead to yet another uh, crisis uh, down the road very, very quickly. Michael, let's uh, unpack the depth of this crisis. Now, the the war has uh, led uh, Ukraine into a deeper crisis. Talk about the devastation that has caused and what they have to manage in addition to what the IMF is trying to impose on them. Well, when Kiev went to war against eastern Ukraine, uh, it, it fought primarily uh, the coal uh, mining region uh, and the export region. 38% uh, of Ukraine's exports are to Russia. And yet uh, this was the this export capacity uh, has been uh, bombed out of existence. And in fact, uh, the electric companies that fuel the electricity to the coal mines have been bombed out. So Ukraine can't even supply itself with coal. Now, that's in, uh, what is so striking about all this 
this, is that just a, a few weeks ago, on January 28th, Christine Lagarde, the head of the IMF, said the IMF does not make loans to countries that are uh, engaged in war. That would be funding one side or another. And yet Ukraine is involved in a civil war. And also the IMF articles of agreement say that it, does, it cannot make loans to an insolvent country. So how on earth can the IMF be part of a loan bailout for uh, the Ukraine if, uh, it, number one, it, it's at war. The war has to stop totally. Number two, it's insolvent. Uh, the only solution is uh, uh, that Ukraine will somehow scale back its debts to private uh, investors. And that means a lot of contrarian hedge funds investors. So again, the Financial Times today has an article uh, showing that uh, the uh, an American investor has seven billion uh, of Ukraine debts and wants to speculate in it. How is Ukraine going to treat the speculators? And then finally, how is, uh, how, how is uh, the IMF going to treat the fact that Russia's sovereign fund lent three billion uh, euros to the uh, Ukraine on harsh terms through the London uh, uh, agreement terms that can't be written down. Uh, it is the IMF going to insist that Russia take a, the same haircut that it's uh, imposing on the hedge funds? All of this is going to be the kind of conflict that's going to take m a much more effort than even the uh, uh, the solutions that we've seen uh, over the last few days uh, have taken on the military battlefront. And uh, so how could uh, Ukraine imagine getting out of this crisis? Uh, by, uh, it, it, it imagines it'll get out of the crisis by the West giving it $50 billion and saying, here's all the money you need, spend it as you want. That's the extent of its imagination. This is fantasy. It's living in a dream world, except that uh, a few uh, weeks ago, George Soros came out in the uh, New York Review of Books and said, give Ukraine $50 billion and look at it as a down payment on military war with Russia. Well, immediately Kiev said, uh, these, uh, yes, we will only spend them on defensive arms. We will defend Ukraine all the way up to Siberia as we wipe out uh, the Russians. Today, uh, uh, yet another Financial Times article said, yes, give Ukraine the $50 billion that George Soros asked for. Uh, we've, we've got to enable it to have enough money that it, it can fight America's war against Russia. And uh, uh, the Europeans are saying, wait a minute, not only at the end of this, there will be no more Ukrainians uh, to fight. But but uh, the war is going to spread into uh, Poland and into elsewhere. Because if the money that's given to Ukraine is really for what uh, the Obama administration and Hillary and Soros are all pressing for, to go to war with Russia, then Russia is going to say, OK, if we're being attacked, by foreign troops, we're going to have to not only bomb the troops, but uh, the airports are coming in, the railway stations are coming in. We're going to extend it towards Europe. And apparently there are reports that Putin told Europe, look, you have two choices before you. The one choice, Europe, uh, Germany, and Russia can be a very prosperous area with Russia's raw materials and uh, European technology. We can be the most prosperous area in the world, or you can go to war with us and uh, you can be uh, wiped out. Take your choice. Michael, complex and interesting times uh, in Ukraine as well as uh, at the IMF. Thank you so much for joining us. It's good to be here, Charmaine. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.